This guy's over here in the thick of reviewing these uh, 803 speakers. Hold on, let's get a let's get a quick take though. Quick thought: What do you think about these uh, these brand new D4s? I, I really like them. I like them a lot better than the D uh, the 803 D3s. The uh, one inch down this tweeter, that mid range. I don't know exactly what they've done differently. So I know we. This ain't, this ain't a review. You just go off the top of your head. I just I love them. I think they sound fantastic. I'm listening to one of my favorite songs to listen to for uh, these speaker reviews is that Sweet Jane live uh, at the Trinity Church, and it sounds fantastic. The highs are super crisp. The bass is nice and punchy without being messy. Listen, this is a vlog, Bill. You're going into review voice mode. Sorry. We ain't got to be in review mode. Anyways, uh, these uh, things rock. I'll just give you my little, quick little impressions here. These fucking things rock. They're fucking good. Much better than last year's version. Sorry for you guys that bought last year's version. Yeah. But this, is <laughs> no, last, this is definitely better. The, last year, they didn't buy it. They bought the Harmony 13As, and, or the, the, the Martin Logan 13As instead, because we like those better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you watched the last video or not, the last vlog or not, but we got to take another road trip. I got to go pick up some more subwoofers. You know, subwoofers, every time I come, it's like, like more subwoofers have sprung up out of the ground. <laughs> First off, I'm shooting this today, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day for all you women watching this video right now. All probably like 1.2% of you guys, because I checked my analytics. This is about 1% of women that watch this channel. So, happy Valentine's Day to all you girls out there. Uh, I guess some of you guys as well. But breaking news for tomorrow, even though I'm shooting this today, I'm gonna post it tomorrow, February 15th. The NDA has lifted. I can now officially talk about it. The brand new Epson LS1200 4K projector. This year's model is a laser projector. I think it's something like 12, 2700 lumens. Uh, it's laser, of course, so it's 2000 hours of lamp life on it. Or 20,000 20, hours of laser life out of it. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> uh, contrast ratio is 2,500,000 to one. It's gonna be crazy bright as well. It supports HDMI, it's got HDMI 2.1 and you can game at 4K, 120 frames per second. Also supports 444, 4K 60, 12-bit color support. It's got, uh, I said HDMI 2.1 with EARC, and there's Adaptive Gamma, which I guess is like their version of uh, dynamic tone mapping. So that is gonna be part of the 1200 as well. And then this model, the 1200, is gonna come with the mounting kit as well as the cable mounting cover, I think, the cable covers. And there's also gonna be an anamorphic lens attachment that you can purchase optionally for it. I would assume that's probably like another $15, $2,000 maybe. So I mean, that's, I don't know when that's gonna release, maybe sometime in March. I forgot what the date was, I'll have to go back and check. But that, for all that, it's gonna be $1,000, which I think is a steal. This of course is not gonna be a native 4K projector. I mean, there's already like videos about this that came out like four months ago. I think I did a video about it when it like leaked over in the UK, but this is for the US, it's now official. 8.3 million pixels on screen, unlike the previous gen, where I think it was something like four million pixels on screen. But it's still an upscaling projector, of course. It's not native, so it's still gonna be using pixel shifting. But I think it's, um, it's giving you 8.3 million pixels this time around, so. I think, eight point, just as long as it has 8.3 million pixels, I guess they're they're gonna call it true 4K instead of native 4K. So true 4K resolution in this year's model for only $1,000. If you do wanna pick it up, obviously you can go to like Best Buy or whatever. Or if you wanna pick it up at Value Electronics, you can pick it up there as well. Just let them know that we sent you. FedEx coming through. Last time we were here, FedEx was supposed to deliver seven boxes, but they only showed up before. And then we had another two come yesterday, and then today's the final one. 
I was a little bit worried going in there because I forgot my mask. Sometimes you just can't go anywhere in Connecticut without your mask, but I took a shot because that old man came out. He wasn't wearing a mask, but I guess if you go in there, they actually have a section for masks. So kudos to FedEx for supplying free masks for their patrons. All right, finally, get to check out these subwoofers. These guys are the, um, I feel like I'm doing PSB speakers like every other, every other week. So these are the custom sound series, the CSR, CSIR subwoofers. These aren't very big, by the way, if you couldn't tell from the box. First thing we get here is the, the grill. This looks like a, maybe a wall mounting bracket. Two more mounting brackets. And this looks like it's the base because there's some rubber feet right here. So I'm thinking the sub probably lays on top of this. This is definitely the smallest, lightest subwoofer that I've ever had in here for review. But this has the same finish as the PWM speakers, which I really like. It's a satiny black finish. It's got a nice flat piston driver. This is a 10 inch driver. Frequency response for this, I think is like, uh, it goes down to like 25 Hertz. So let me uh, spin this around. So there are already brackets on here. So I think that first bracket that I took out of the box attaches to your wall. And then this here anchors it to the wall. If you want to mount it on your wall, you don't have to mount it on your wall, but you can. This is a passive subwoofer. These are the binding posts for that. Size wise, it's fairly small. I think it's 15 and three quarters by 15 and three quarters by, I think it's about five inches deep. I'll put the measurements on the screen if I got that wrong. I'd be interested to check this out by putting this on the wall. I'm gonna try to put it on the wall. Might not be a good idea, especially with the neighbors downstairs, cause it might travel straight down the wall and up the wall as well. So I think it'd be cool to put this like behind the screen, like maybe between the, uh, maybe the left front speaker or the right front speaker and the center speaker. And then since this is passive, they also sent along the amplifier. Box is looking a little beat up, but inside here we got a couple different power cords. Looks like some mounting, some feet. This is rack ears, so if you want to rack mount it. Some uh, documentation. Man, you know what? Every time I get something new, I hate to really rip the plastic apart because I like to send it back kind of nice, but sorry guys, I had to tear it up. I had to tear it up on you. But well, this is a fairly small amp. I believe it's class D. I think it's 500 watts for this amplifier. It'll do two passive subs. So I got two subs here. So a little LED display in the front. I believe this is the volume knob and then the power button right there. It's got a few different DSP options. We've got the inputs here, LFE. We got some trigger. We got, looks like some Phoenix connectors back here. And then we have the speaker selector. It's either one speaker or two or one subwoofer or two the main power inlet, and then the main power switch. And there's a remote IR input as well. So a fairly small amplifier, class D, it's one U, so it'll take a minimal space in your rack. I'm gonna hopefully work on this review in the next couple of weeks, next few months, hopefully sooner than later. So definitely check that out. And thanks for checking out this latest video. We'll see you in the next one. All right.